Hi, I'm Joseph Egwajimba. And I'm James Little. And we are members of the National Society of Black Engineers here at UAF. I'm currently serving as its president, and James is one of the previous presidents and co-founder of the chapter here at UAF. I mean, when you see a need, you mean a need. And so I think growing up, I didn't really know too much about engineering, didn't have any engineers in my family. Um, so I didn't even actually know I wanted to be an engineer. I mean, coming to college, like, I, I mean, I thought engineering was all about building boats, cars, like, airplanes, you know, the book. Um, but it was totally different, you know. Looking around me, because I was at the University of Tulsa at the time, that this was tough. And I don't think I could go through it by myself. And so, but I didn't know who to connect with. There wasn't, I think there was two African Americans out of a class, 250 in my class, patrol engineers. And so obviously, like, just based off of like similar interests, like we connected, um, but we realized that he doesn't know what he's doing either. <laughs> so we, we just came to this point where like, well, how do we, what if other people are in this place with us? Um, is there something that we can do to kind of combine, um, become one and kind of just keep continue to fight, whatever, excel. Um, and that's how we met an advisor and that thought would be started for me. And that year I transferred to University of Alaska Fairbanks. But I wanted to bring what I had learned from Tulsa here to Alaska because I've seen the same need. I'm studying mechanical engineering here at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And my story is a real rags to riches um, type story. I started at the University of uh, Houston and I had a very bad GPA first couple of semesters. Um, down in University of Houston, I was surrounded by fellow African Americans. All of my, my closest friend group had 4.0s across the board and I didn't use any of my resources. I wasn't thinking about diverse minds and being inclusive and thinking that I wasn't humble enough to accept the fact that I might not have all the answers. And once I started getting um, more diverse and inclusive, I was able to pick up the ideas of my fellow classmates and uh, achieve my own success. Uh, some of the things that we do here on campus are professional development and volunteering around the community. We work with a Pioneer Home. We put on an ice cream social last year. We work with uh, Boys and Girls Club. Help also working with uh, a lot of with Hunter Elementary. We like to put on science fairs. Um, we we collaborate with different clubs and help with them. But we also started our own um, at Hunter Elementary last year. This year we have a couple after school programs that we kind of kind of like target. And it's just a way for kids to kind of interact with science um, and actually see like there's fun. There's fun to math. There's fun to like, science, and um, like it's for everybody. It comes in when you talk about diversity and inclusion. It really brings in that inclusion, getting kids involved with STEM activities, letting them know that the theory that you you see in class has an application. You know, there's a reason why you're learning these different things, and they they have incredible applications in the world. And not only that, but to encourage them to say, hey, maybe the STEM field is for you. Uh, each year we've gone to the profession, the national conference, NSBE's national conference. Um, and that's over 300, 350 engineering companies that kind of come and, and look for like just job prospects. You have to go around and it's like a kid in a, a candy store. You just go around and you talk to all these different companies. Like I, like James said, we both got opportunities from going to these conventions. So uh, my name is Barnabas Doga. Uh, I grad student, petroleum engineering grad student. I came all the way from Ghana uh, two years ago to pursue a master's degree in petroleum engineering. To be honest, when I got here, um, I didn't have a lot of people I knew or community to plug into, but uh, coming to my grad program and immediately meeting two people that were in the um, National Society of Black Engineers chapter and uh, just embraced me, uh, introduced me to a community of, of other engineers I could be comfortable with. Not only that, they, they provided textbooks for me, which I couldn't afford. So uh, they, they have a facility where all the books they use their entire semester, they uh, save them for uh, students that come in into the program. So um, that was very helpful because if you can't afford textbooks, you might not live to your full potential in grad school. Making that transition from academia to the professional field, getting internships while you're in school, and making sure that when you get out of school, you have a job waiting for you. That's the hard part. That's the part that a lot of people don't think about coming into college as a freshman and then realize later on that they should have been building over time. And, uh, the many opportunities that we've gotten from the University of Alaska Fairbanks really show why UA is strong.